Hey everyone, Scoggle again. We're going to be doing uh, mid lane, and it's another unusual mid lane, but it's a lane you may either want to try or be on the against and kind of try to have some ideas of what to do. So it's Yorick mid, because I don't know if they did that just to follow wherever Kale went with Pantheon, but Yorick's mid, I don't know if that's just by design or whatever, and you have... Sejuani is your jungler, and it's Rise against you mid. So probably when they saw Rise, they knew if they took Pantheon, they'd get that match up top. And so Yorick gets to go against Rise. I don't know if Yorick was picked first, and they picked uh, Kale to deal with Yorick, because I've heard that that is a good matchup for Kale, and then they counterpicked that with Panth against Kale. And so here... Just by throwing the golem, the ghoul down, he's able to just go that way instead of the long way around. It does tip him off that you invaded their jungle, but that's not always the end of the world. So, pretty soon Xin Xiao is going to be sad. And the early jungle invade worked really well because they didn't get spotted. If you get spotted, you may not have that option, but you could always fall back, do your blue buff start for your team. And so, if you are Yorick here, you want to do your typical Yorick harass them all day. You don't necessarily, if you can farm with your auto attacks and throw your E on them, they're going to have a bad time of it. If you have to use your E to auto to farm or your and your W and your Q or whatever, then you're going to have a worse time. But if you're just able to throw the ghouls on them, and then he starts tons of pots and uh, wards, which is a very common start right now, probably because it make, gives you a really safe early. So you can see how safely Yorick can just push the lane. So if you're Yorick, you want to be pushing. That's just, you You can just see the level of safety as just farm-wise. I mean, he's ahead. Rise will be able to catch up some, but Rise is going to have some trouble to last hitting under tower. And then with W and E, you can just keep her ass down, even even extended. W costs a lot of mana. It's very nice to have because of the slow. It helps you get away. does free damage while you kite away from them and stuff. But you can see he's mostly trying to auto-attack farm. Q's fantastic on York when they are when they are ever uh, uh, melee because it just hits so hard. But it's if they're range and you're not going to be able to get to him, such like Rise, he's just going to ruin prison you. You're not going to be able to hit Q on him. So it's probably useful just because you can Q a minion and the ghoul will chase after him. And you can just see how rough of a time Rise is having just by staying aggressive and trying to cast your minions forward so that they're hitting Rise. Like, he's not even casting them on the minions by Rise, he's just casting it on Rise if he can. Because Rise's range is not very good. So because Rise's range is so low, you can E him for trying to farm. Yeah, he's not even Eing the minions. So if they have short range on their spells and, ability, and their auto attacks, you can just go ahead and do something like that. And just really harass him with it. So yeah, you can see how often he's going to have two points in E now. So York really does have options on his skills. Some champions do and some don't. And his only issue right now is he is low mana, but it's not the end of the world. He's also not in a lot of danger. Rise, Rise and Shao, though, can kind of freeze you in place and then pop you up in the air. So if Sejuani's not close to, to be able to help you, you may want to be careful. I mean, it doesn't have to be Sejuani, but if your jungler's not close and you'll have no assist and they have a Maokai or a strong jank, jungling presence plus a Rise uh, snare, you do have to be a little bit careful. And I think he forces Rise to go back early so that Rise can... Uh, so, so that uh, Rise did that so that he could get his tier of the goddess so he could start stacking that and try to go to hyper carry because he's not going to win this early laning phase. If you play Yorick, you probably know how to be good with him. If you don't play Yorick, watch a few videos, learn how to be aggressive and push, and you're going to have a good time of it. So, just speed it up a little bit, because I don't really care what he does. Unless he does something crazy going back to lane, I don't really care what he does. 
because everyone knows how to skip on back out to lane. So here he goes. He's got his Tear of the Goddess, two mana potions, and some more health potions and a ward. And he's got his movement speed boots just so he can be a little bit more mobile. You want to be able to Kai, you want to be able to do some things. So yeah, you can see why Q isn't that useful, but E's still useful. He's getting a lot of lifesteal and doing a lot. Rise went and picked up. Yep, Tear. He's got Tear and he's got his uh, Flask. And the Flask is going to help him out quite a bit in this lane. So as Rise, you you actually hold in once you get your tier. You're not, he's not as screwed. He's not as big of a bullying t as it was. And the farm's a lot closer than I thought. So there's just that's just a good use of flash and and your your uh, snare plus a Zin Xiao. Zin Xiao is going to be able to uh, pop him up and do a lot of CC. So that's. You'll have to be careful of your positioning as Yorick if the mid laner has hard CC that can't miss. Even if they have uh, skill shot CC, you got to be careful a little bit because ganks can be really strong like that. So speed up again. And you can see the bowling early and it kind of tapers off. That's why you've got to be an early game bully because if you can knock them out, if you can get 20 CS in the lead, you might be able to keep up your pressure. Otherwise, you might have to start building things like Null Magic Mantle just to get through this lane. Spirit Visage might be of a lot of use to you so that your E can do a lot. But he can still push Rise in, which, if nothing else, by pushing Rise in, then he is able to uh, stop Rise from roaming. So, if you can always keep your lane pushed, you can invade their jungle, you can help your jungler out. See, he's able to respond to this better than Rise is, because he's always pushed. And if Rise would have gone for a revenge kill on Sejuani, he would have been there to possibly revenge the revenge and get to uh, Rise. So Rise can't really, other than, as long as he can keep tabs on Zin Xiao, so you may want to invest in wards for this lane, because you can play as aggressive as you want if you know where the jungler is. He, I don't think Rise can kill this uh, Yorick without the help of his jungle. You can just see the harass that just keeps going down. Rise does have a short cooldown on his ultimate, and while it, and he gets a lot of sustain that way, but you can just see how ghoul after ghoul is just making life very difficult for Rise. So as low as he gets, he knows he has a panthold coming, probably by pings. Rise even uses an ult and he can get out of it. So and he ults the Pantheon so that if Pantheon dies, he could turn it, and if not, the extra damage might be enough. So you kind of want to, if you're Yorick, you definitely want to be ulting teammates that are stronger than you every chance you get. So, you kind of see the sustain. I would possibly go uh, more wards early and just stay warded. And when you're not, since you're pushing so hard, you might have to base every time you're, uh, or go get the wraiths or something. It's just, you don't want to be too out of position against that much CC. It's the only thing I would say is Ryze can't really miss with this snare, so... Be careful who his jungler is. Okay, we're going to hurry on back to the lane. Right now, two assists and the uh, kill. And you can just see, see the awesome burst that you have with your jungler. So Ryze has the same problem you have. As if your jungler's there... He doesn't have enough. He's got one single target bind. He doesn't have enough to get away from all the CC that Sejuani has and avoid your damage. So, see, creep wise, 64 49. So he's really kept this Rise under control. And Rise is a hyper carry, so if you keep Rise under control, you're doing your job. You're doing a good thing. And he's getting his stuff 64, 3 assists. Rise has one assist and has died more. So it's not the hardest counter, but you can kind of bully around in the mid lane with York, and they can know the pain that was season two top lane against York. And just with. And then he's got the ward onto his right side. He needs to get his race warded again or something. If you're playing, you got you do gotta be concerned about being really extended without wards and flash down. 
because it's still scary to face in sh or rise damage plus in Xiao. Or here comes Lulu. If Lulu could have landed more, the the slow, that might have been enough. Oh, it might be if Rice gets a rune prison. Yeah, you can see how by not knowing that someone was coming from that side, he had no really strong escape. So the only mistake this York's really making is being caught out of position. And you can tell the matchup is over, so I'm going to end it here. But that's what you can do well and what doesn't work as well. Anyhow, hope you learned something. Take care.